This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 10 from Module 3, Angle Problems and Solving Equations. Student outcomes from this lesson. Students use vertical angles, adjacent angles, angles on a line, and angles at a point in a multi-step problem to write and solve simple equations for an unknown figure, for an unknown angle in a figure. The essential question for Lesson 10, how can an angle relationship help you set up an equation to find the measure of an angle? What do you notice about the three figures below? There are three angles that appear to be the same measurement but are notated differently. They indicate different ways of labeling or identifying the angles. Figure 1 is named by the arc, angle B. And notice that we're using an abbreviation or a symbol for the word angle. Figure 2 is named by the vertex. And the vertex is where the two rays come together. And this is called angle A. And again, the symbol is used instead of writing the word angle. In figure three, it's named by three points. And when you name an angle by three points, it's important that the vertex, point A, is the middle letter. So we could call this angle C, A, D, or we could call it angle D, A, C. What's important is that the vertex is the middle letter. Let's go over some angle relationships. In our first diagram, adjacent angles are two angles, angle BAC and angle CAD with a common side, side AC, and this is a ray, AC, are adjacent angles if C belongs to the interior of angle BAD. Angles A and B are adjacent angles. Angle BAC and angle CAD are adjacent angles. The next, ver the next vocabulary word is vertical angles. And two angles are vertical angles or vertically opposite angles if their sides form two pair of opposite rays. So vertical angles are formed by two straight lines. Here's one line and here's the other line. And the resulting angles are called vertical angles. So Angle A and angle B are vertical angles, and you'll notice here that they are equal in measure. Then we also could identify these by their letters and say the measure of angle DCF, the measure of angle DCF is a vertical angle to the measure of angle CGCE. So they have the same measure. Also, these angles will be vertical or in vertical and congruent. And angles on a line. The sum of the measures of the angles that share a ray and form a line is 180 degrees. So A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees, and they are on a line. Angles at a point. The measure of all angles formed by three or more rays with the same vertex is 360 degrees. So the vertex is point A, and we have angle A, which is right here, and then we have angle B, which is right here, and angle C, which is right here. So those are being named by the arc and they have a sum of 360 degrees. When you go all the way around in a circle, that is, 100, or that is 360 degrees. In our opening exercise, name the angles that are vertical. Now we're not gonna name every pair, but we'll go through a few. So vertical angles are formed by two straight lines. So if we take those two lines, a pair of vertical angles would be right here and then you would need to label those using the points on the line. Angles AEC and angle DEB. Name the angles that are adjacent. Now adjacent angles are next to each other and they share a common ray. So an example of vertical angles might be these two, AEG and GED. Name the angles that are on a line. 
So let's highlight a line. And we have two lines to choose from, so I'm going to go ahead and choose this line. And angles that are on a line would be the angles, all three of them that add up. So that would be these three angles. And that's C, E, F, F, E, B, and B, E, D. Name angles that are at a point. Well, the angles that are a point are every one of those angles. So let's clean this up and re-highlight here. And we have starting, let's start here, B, E, F, F, E, C, C, E, A, A, E, G, G, E, D, D, E, D. So all of these angles are angles at a point. The point is the vertex, and they have a sum of 360 degrees. Let's go ahead and write those in your notes. In example one, estimate the measurement of x. So let's draw a line here, and we know that this right angle would be 90 degrees. This is a little bit more than half. Half of 90 is 45. So I'm going to measure this angle to be about 50 degrees. In a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. Angle BAC and angle CAD are angles on a line and have a sum of 180 degrees. Write an equation for the angle relationship shown in the figure and solve for x. Then find the measure of angle BAC and confirm your answer by measuring the angle with a protractor. Since they form a or have a sum of 180 degrees, We'll say that the measure of angle x plus 132 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Using your subtraction property of equality, subtract 132 from both sides of the equation. This forms a zero pair. x plus zero equals x. And 180 minus 132 is 48 degrees. And we had estimated it to be about 50 degrees, so it is very close. If you have a protractor, you can go ahead and measure that with a protractor to confirm it. In exercise one, in a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. So here I see a 90 degree angle and two other angles. So I have three angles all together. They all have a common vertex of A and they have a line line BAE, or you could just call that line BE. So the relationship that they have is that they are angles on a line and they have a sum of 180 degrees. And I can use that relationship to write an equation because I know that added together they will equal 180 degrees. So my equation would be 3x plus 90 plus 2x equals 180. Combine like terms, that gives us 5x plus 90 equals 180. And then from here you would want to use your subtraction property of equality and subtract 90 from both sides of the equation. That leaves us with 5x equals 90. And then to solve that equation, 5x equals 90. They have multiplied both sides of the equation by using the reciprocal. So Instead of multiplying 5 times x, you do the opposite, which is to divide. And dividing by 5 is the same as multiplying by 1 fifth. And so the solution, we've got a solution of 18 because 1 fifth of 90 is 18. Now, the direction said to find the measurement of the two angles, and so we have to substitute the 18 degrees right here. So you have 2 times 18 and then 3 times 18 to get those numbers, and the answers are 54 degrees and 36 degrees. In example 2, in a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. So you see that you have two lines intersecting. Angle AEL and angle LEB are angles on a line and have a sum of 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and label those. So we have angle A, 
E L and angle L E B. So these two angles together equal 180 degrees. So you have this acute angle plus this obtuse angle and together they equal 180 degrees. Also, angle AEL, so we, again, let's do this in a different color. We have angle AEL and angle KEB, which is right here. So you have these obtuse angles, and those are called vertical angles, and they have an equal measure. Write an equation for the angle relationship shown in the figure and solve for x and y. Find the measurement of angle LEB and angle KEB. So we're finding the measure of this angle, which is acute, and this angle, which is obtuse. So if you notice the angle Y, you don't have to do any math for that one. That is already uh, defined by the relationship of vertical angles. So these angles are congruent. So the measure of angle Y, let's write out the measure of angle Y, is equal to 144 degrees. Then to find the measure of angle X, we'll use the relationship of the angles on a line. And we know that these two angles will have a sum of 180 degrees. So we'll go ahead and write out that equation. We have 144 added to X equals 180 degrees. Then go ahead and solve that equation using the subtraction property of equality to determine the measure of angle X. So this is 36 degrees and this is 144 degrees. And we can double check to make sure that that's right by adding those back in. 144 plus 36 degrees does equal 180 degrees. In exercise two, in a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. So um, I, what I've noticed, I have two lines and those lines, I'm gonna highlight those. So one of those lines is here and then the other line is here. So I've got a couple of pair of vertical angles and the vertical angles would be, uh, let's see, right here and right here. And so what that means is that those are congruent. So the one that's 85 degrees, that is made up of one angle. And then the other one that is also 85 degrees is made up of two angles. So that means that 3x plus 16 degrees will equal 85 degrees because they're congruent. So the angle relationship we have, let's start over here. Angle JEN, which is right here, angle JEN and angle NEM, which is right here, are adjacent angles. When added together, they are the measure of angle JEM. And JEM is this angle. And JEM and KEL are vertical angles. So the purple angles are vertical, meaning that they are congruent. So this is equal to 85 degrees, and then these two together have a sum of 185 degrees. Write an equation for the angle relationship shown and solve for x. So we have the 3x plus the 16 degrees equals the 85 degrees. Use the subtraction property of equality and subtract 16 from both sides. That leaves you with 3x equals 69. To complete that equation or to solve for x, you can either divide by 3 or multiply by the reciprocal 1 third. So 1 third multiplying on both sides of the equation, a third of 3 equals 1, and that leaves you with 1x, and then a third of 69 is 23. And so the question was solve for x, and we have done that. x equals 23. In example 3, in a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. So what I notice here is that I have three angles and they are angles on a point. And if I added all three of those angles together, 
So I have this angle plus this angle plus the third angle. I've gone all the way around in a circle, so they have a sum of 360 degrees. They are angles at a point and have a sum of 360 degrees. Write an equation for the angle relationship shown in the figure and solve for x. Find the measure of angle EKF. So measure EKF, EKF, and confirm your answer by measuring with a protractor. So we know that they have a sum of 360 degrees, and so we're going to add 135 plus x plus 90 degrees equals 360 degrees. So x plus 135 plus 90. Those are the three angles that together have a sum of 360 degrees. Simplify before you solve and combine your like terms. So now we have x plus 225 equals 360. Use the subtraction property of equality and subtract 225 from both sides of the equation to 25 and negative 225 make a zero pair and zero plus x is x. And 360 minus 225 is 135 degrees. So have we answered the question? Find the measurement of angle EKF. And that is 135 degrees. So you can check to make sure that that's right. 135 plus 135 plus 90 should have a sum of how much? Since it goes all the way in a circle, it should have a sum of $360, or sorry, just $360, and it does. In exercise three, in a complete sentence, describe the angle relationship in the diagram. So again, we have angles on a point and all the way around in the circle. That would be a total of 360 degrees. So they have a sum of 360 degrees. Find the measurement of angle GAH. So let's see which angle that is. GAH. And I'm noticing that that's called x plus 1 and not just x. So we need to include that whole part into the equation. So let's go ahead and write our equation. We have x plus 1, and that's this angle, whoops, and that is this angle right here. And then we have 59 degrees plus 103 degrees plus 167 degrees equals 360. Pause the video and solve the equation. So <clears throat> combine all of your like terms and then subtract that from 360 and we get x equals 30. And when you solve for the measurement of GAH, remember that is x plus 1. So that's 30 degrees plus 1 more is 31 degrees. We're going to skip example 4. And we're going to go down to the summary. In this lesson, you have learned to describe the angle relationship in a diagram and set up and solve an equation that models it. You can verify your answers by measuring the unknown angles with a protractor. So we know that angles on a line have a sum of 180 degrees. We know that angles that form a right angle will have a sum of 90 degrees. We know that angles that go all the way around in a circle will have a sum of 360 degrees and that is called angles on a point. We also know that vertical angles are equal in measure and are formed by two intersecting lines. Those are vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent which means equal to each other.